I'm Heather Vale with Performance Marketing Insider, and joining me today is Alex Epstein, Account Manager for Engage BDR's First Impression Buy Side Platform. Hey, Alex, thanks for being here. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me. So, can you let us know exactly what First Impression is? What's so special about it? Yeah, absolutely. First Impression is our own self serve DSP, it's a platform that connects you to multiple exchanges across the web, across a, a multitude of different channels that allows you to run um, a, a different types of campaigns. Everything from branding to uh, DR campaigns to e-commerce campaigns. Um, and it also comes with a load of different targeting capabilities to help you improve ROI. Okay, cool. So we could talk about it forever, but showing is usually better than telling. So why don't you actually show us how it works? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Let me get in there. Okay. And we can create an example campaign and go through a couple of different campaigns that are already in there. Nice. So what we're looking at here right now, we're looking at the dashboard of First Impression. So whenever you log into First Impression, this is the first thing you'll see. And this is my account, so there's nothing live in here, and you'll see a bunch of uh, campaigns that are inactive pending. But once you start running your campaigns, you'll see all the information being reflected onto the dashboard. So you'll see all of your impressions per campaign, your clicks, your click-through rates, cost, revenues if you're tracking conversions through first impressions, and including your cost per click, your ECPM, and your ECPA. I have a couple of different campaigns in here. I have a web campaign, a mobile campaign. Um, so we could go through and take a look at how you create a campaign and, and go through those steps. Yeah, cool. Let's do that. Okay, great. So whenever you want to create a new campaign, very simple. Just hit this Create New Campaign button. And you'll see this screen come up. And these are just the campaign basics. So you want to give your campaign a name. You want to select whether this is going to be a mobile campaign, a video campaign, or both. And we also have an option here that is called Viewable Optimize. So as you guys know, we are one of the first companies that's allowed to sell viewable impressions. So these are impressions that are guaranteed to have eyes on them. Um, okay, just, so if I click on that, that's going to cost me more? We do recommend the CPMs uh, to price a little bit higher, starting at about $2. Uh, but, you know, since this is an auction system, very rarely will your eCPM actually equal your bid. Okay. But, you know, there's a reason that these impressions could be a little bit more expensive because they're more, they're more valuable. Okay. Cool. Um, also within the campaign basic screen, we have a couple of different options for your budgets and frequency capping. So frequency capping allows you to um, show your ads multiple times to the same user within a 24-hour period. So let's say a frequency cap of four allows a user to see your ads four times per day uh, and then it'll cut it off at that four mark period. So there isn't really a limit on how you set your frequency cap. You could go literally one to unlimited, but unlimited is not recommended unless you really want to blow your budget out of the water. Okay. So we also have an overall spend cap and a daily spend cap. The overall spend cap will uh, limit your, your entire campaign performance to that particular limit. So okay, so if I want to spend $1,000 on this campaign and that's it, I type that there. Exactly, exactly. Okay. But if you want to have this campaign run on a daily basis without an overall spend, spend limit, then you should implement a daily spend cap here. Okay, how much would you recommend? You could start off anywhere from 100 to 300 bucks. I think that's a pretty good start because that will allow your ads to run pretty much daily and get you enough performance so you could see you know, how you could optimize going forward. Of course, that also depends on what kind of targeting you're choosing, what kind of sites you're choosing. So if you're doing something like run a network targeting, meaning you're targeting every single site, every single app that we have in our inventory list, then I recommend that daily spend cap go higher, 500 and up. Okay, so if someone's running their first campaign, do you recommend they choose mobile, video, or both? It depends. It depends what kind of campaign they have to run. Um, it could you, it, it could be all of those. It could be just one of those. So if your campaign is just a web campaign, then don't choose anything. If you don't choose any of these options, and by default this would be a regular desktop display campaign. 
If okay. you're heavily mobile focused, then obviously go with mobile campaign. If the campaign calls for video, then choose video. Okay. So and it, it'll depend think, on the advertiser needs. Right, okay. Do you think they should start off with the viewable optimized? I think they should not initially. Okay. Just because I'm a big proponent of starting off wide, meaning you're starting off trying to catch, you know, as many users as possible and then optimizing down. Okay. And if optimizing down means choosing strictly viewable impressions, then obviously choose that option. Okay, cool. So once we create the campaign, you're talking about you know which different sites it's running on and stuff. How do we actually target where it's going to run? Sure, sure. Let me let me show you exactly how that process goes. So let me jump in into a campaign that already has some ads in it, so we could check it out. Okay. So after you choose your campaign basics, you'll see um, a row of tabs come up, and you should really just follow these tabs in order to complete the campaign. Okay. So Next tab down will be creatives, and our our creatives uh, that we support here could be anything like an image, flash, or a third-party tag in case you are working with a third-party ad server. So in order to add a creative, all you have to do is click Add Banner, and you'll see our creative policies come up. And our creative policies basically reflect the policies of the uh, SSPs with whom we work. So. Uh, we can't allow any adult content, we can't allow anything like gambling, anything that's phishing oriented or uh, auto downloads, malware, etc. So just those basic, basic guidelines. Okay. Once you agree to our guidelines, you're allowed to upload a creative, whether that's going to be an image or flash creative or a third party tag. With a third party tag, you just give your banner a name, cite the width and the height, and copy and paste your third party tag into here. Once that tag is uploaded, and I have an example here, you can preview that tag and you'll see the ad reflected here. So here we have a nice little uh, gaming ad. Once the ad goes through an editorial process, we have a team here that'll uh, take a look at the ads, make sure that they click through, make sure that they comply with the, comply with the guidelines, the ad will be approved and you'll be good to go. So. Um, okay. Following a creative, we have a, a multitude of different targeting options. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. <laughs> so we start off with geotargeting. Uh, geotargeting, you can literally choose every single country in the world and run there in the same campaign, or you could divide your campaigns out by geo. We allow you to exclude countries or include countries. So let's say you want to target specifically the United States, all you have to do is click exclude all countries except the following, choose United States on the left hand side here, and then you'll have the option to drill down to the state level, the DMA level, designated marketing area, or the zip code level. Okay. Depending on the needs of the campaign. Right, so obviously this will change campaign by campaign, but in general, do you think people should do more geotargeting or leave it broad again? Again, it, it depends on the campaign. If the campaign is U.S. focused, just select the country itself, and then if the need, the need comes up to drill down into the state level later on, definitely do so. Um, but if, your campaign, if you have a ton of different international campaigns which call for different creative, then absolutely create new campaigns and select each, each geo-target separately. Okay, so like you duplicate the campaign and one might be for the US and one would be for Canada, but the creative would be slightly different or whatever. Exactly. Okay, exactly. Okay. Especially if you're targeting a different, you know, a country with a different language, you want to separate those out. Okay. Cool. So after we've selected our geotarget, let's say we're going with United States, you just click update geotargeting. And we are now strictly looking at the United States. Okay. okay. Following geotargeting, we have something here called device targeting. So device targeting is a is an interesting option because it'll be different for each channel. So in this case, we are choosing a regular desktop campaign. So everything that's reflected here correlates with that particular channel. So we have on the left hand side our browsers we could target, and on the right hand side we have our operating systems. And as you see, it's anything from Linux to OS X, Windows. Uh, within the browsers, we have Firefox, Opera, Safari, IE, basically the major, major browsers. Okay, so why would I not want it to 
be shown on Firefox, for example? What's the purpose of this? Um, again, it'll depend on the campaign. You might find that the audience who uses Firefox will be different than the audience who uses IE. Okay. For example, it's, uh, it's, it's known that IE users tend to be a little bit older, while Chrome users tend to be younger and have more disposable income. Yeah. So using those particular statistics, you can pick and choose which campaign, which browsers you want your campaign to target. Okay. Usually what I do recommend with um, our users whenever they do start running a brand new campaign is to leave these options as they are, leave them blank and target everything to start, and then narrow down. Unless, okay. of, course, unless of course, a campaign right away calls for um, strictly OS X targeting or Windows targeting or Linux targeting. Um, okay. Happens very rarely, but that option is always there. So you'll be showing us how we can look at the how the campaigns are performing. Is this one of the options you see? Is how well it's doing on Firefox, on Chrome, and on IE? Now, you know what? At this point, that particular report may not it is not in first impression yet. I know that we have plans to um, update the UI fairly soon, so okay. that's going to be something reflected in later on. Uh, but I know a lot of our clients use. Um, different types of attribution systems, so they're actually able to see on their end which browser performs the best. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Um, one other thing to mention about this particular tab is if you were to choose this to be a mobile campaign, it, the targeting options reflected on the screen would be carrier and device. So you'd be able to select whether you want to target an iPad, an iPhone, a HTC phone, and various types of carriers across the world. So anything from like Vodafone to Verizon, Sprint, etc. Basically, if it's available and it exists right now, it'll be in first impression. Cool. Okay. Okay. Cool. So after we select our target, or let's say we select target all browsers and target all operating systems, we can click update device targeting and move on to our audience targeting tab. So under audience targeting, there's a few options. So we have retargeting available through this platform, so you could utilize First Impression to run retargeting campaigns. And in order to do that, all you have to do is just choose this retargeting option. You could select create a new pixel here. You could enter a pixel name, so let's say new pixel. Hit update audience targeting. And then all you have to do is grab that pixel and copy and paste it over onto the page from which you want to retarget your users. And we provide a couple of different options for pixels. We have a unsecure and secure pixels, both image and iframe, depending on what the site calls for. So all you have to do is just copy and paste that over. And then you also get to control how long users stay within your cookie pool. So how long are they eligible to be retargeted and that could be anywhere from 1 to 90 days. What we usually recommend for retargeting anywhere from 15 to 30 days is more than enough otherwise you might experience customer burnout. Okay so when customers see those retargeted impressions is it at the same rate as the original? Um, it could be a little bit less. Okay. Because whenever you're running like a regular brand new display branding campaign, you know, you're going out after brand new users. You're connecting with new users who are, have not yet seen your site. Whenever you're going to run a retargeting campaign, you're following users who already have been to your site. So that rate will be a lot, a lot slower. But that is the point of building out a cookie pool is you build out a cookie pool of users who visited your page and then you're going to go after them. What users will see is that the conversion rates on retargeting campaigns will be higher than they will be on regular display branding campaigns. Okay, 